this is Nico B. Back with some more Dong on Number 3, The End of Hope Speak Academy. When we last left off, we finally got to see Izuru in all his beautiful black hair and see him flex his god powers as he curb stomped Junko and threw Mercur to the side like it was fucking nothing. Oh, it was fantastic. And, uh, Junko, of course, does what Junko does and that she just gets, she just fucks up everybody's life. <laughs> Oh, apparently she didn't actually, and I kind of realized when I went back to watch, she didn't actually pour soup in the guy's eyes. She just took the spoon to essentially gouge it out, so. <laughs> Not that that's much better, though. But yes, that shit was fucking gross. <laughs> I'm glad, at least they didn't, they, they didn't directly show the eyeball, but still, fucking nasty shit, and I think it's just, it's just gonna get worse. I, I mean, we had a whole plethora of students that we have yet to turn into the remnants of despair, and I'm sure we're just gonna get a... Just gonna watch that slowly devolve into the fucking chaos. But uh, anyway, you guys also confirmed. So yes, apparently the what they said about Junko having a very analytic mind that was the big spoiler from Dragon Rupa Zero. Really? That, that that's it? I mean, you guys said it, essentially it's like she isn't really the ultimate supermodel, whatever the hell it was. Or she's her real ability is that she's super analytic. <laughs> really? Like that's it? That's the twist for that story? I don't know, that's kind of a pretty weak twist, honestly. I mean, honestly, anyone could have figured that out just by looking at, just looking anywhere at Danganronpa. Like, all the foresight that had to have gone into, you know, creating everything. She had to have something like that. She, it's, she's already demonstrated she's got a, a, probably a genius intellectual mind, right? That's why she's able to, like, predict whatever, like, how people are going to react to everything. And so, yeah, I, I, I'm a little shocked that that was that, that was the, the big spoiler you guys wanted me to like avoid. I, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't really a whole lot. I don't know if there's more there was more to it that you guys just didn't mention, but that, from what I read in the comments, it seemed like that that's it. It's just it. She's not the super model. She's not the ultimate model. She's ultimate analytic person, and so is uh, Ezra now because he's got every ultimate thing under the the fucking sun. Some of you th think that there might be that characters show up from Dying Ripa Zero, so that might happen at some point. But uh, so far, that's like about it. Just it, oh, you guys said there's a few other things that were like the, some of the scientists in, that were in the room with Hajime. Uh, a few of them actually weren't blue, and I I didn't really it didn't really hit me. But yeah, you didn't really see them very well. You just kind of saw their silhouette um, when they were looking through the window at Hajime's pod, and you could tell from the outline that they weren't blue like everybody else. But apparently they're like, I think they showed up in the Dong Rumpa Zero novel. Oh, that actually reminds me. I think a while back there was a when Ruka like gave the the judges the food. I think one of them was I can't remember the the, the little blue haired kid from uh, Ultra Despair Girls. Um, that was like his father or something. Um, and because he actually had like the way his hair looked, he kind of had the antennas like uh, like he did. So, <laughs> in which case he fucking deserved that shit, didn't he? Fucking hope he died that day. God damn. So, like I said, there's a, been a lot of little details in this series so far, and I think it's I think it's awesome. I, I love when they do that shit. Anyway, so we last a future arc. Uh, we saw Hajime was uh, standing on the island, and then apparently he's still Izuru, but he cut his hair. So, some of you guys said you think that it might be that Hajime has like fused with Izuru essentially. So, like he's still Izuru, but he's got Hajime in him too. So maybe he's maybe he's a good guy now. But I mean, Nagi, like, obviously felt it was okay to leave him there. So I, I don't know. I, I, I guess he felt like he was harmless by that point. Hopefully, I, I'll be really pissed off. If he just like still ends up being evil or something, and then Nagi just fucking left him there. But all right, anyway, future arc episode seven. Let's get started. Oh god. Oh god. It's playing that fucking song that it played from Ultra Despair Girls whenever the kids showed up on screen. Da, da, la, da, 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 da. Just the goofy fucking music. Every time I heard that song coming, I like I kind of grew to dread that song. I was like, oh fuck, here we go. <laughs> here come the kids. Former super grade school level homeroom, Monica Toa. Oh, oh yes, yeah, right. What a dumb fucking ability that is. Good God. <laughs> Barky, give me another martini. I think you've had enough there, buddy. You don't tell me when I've had enough. Of course I can tell you when I've had enough. I'm you. No, you're not you. I'm you. You're me. But then who's you? I don't know. Actually, you know what? Well, let's both have martinis. Oh, that solves everything. <laughs> She's just talking to her, to all the Monokuma bears. Kill me. Oh, fuck. Shut up, Monica. I feel like it cannot be a coincidence that they decided to put swastikas on our fucking irises like that. You know, I, I actually wonder what it, wonder what you could really like thought of like Monica, you know? If you really even could, would consider her a protege or a successor to her at all. 
I don't know. I almost don't believe she would. I think she would, like, shit on her as much as she shit on the other kids, you know? Because it was pretty clear that she didn't care about those other kids either. The despair factor? Uh, there's those weird eyes again. Oh, that's right. That reminds me, too, that apparently the other thing that uh, Danganronpa Zero kind of went into was it elaborated more on Juko's character, which is probably, which is a good thing. I think the thing I just don't like about Juko is just, just how, like, I don't know, she, cartoonishly evil she is, you know? It's like, she's just evil. There's nothing, like, redeeming about her. Just everything, she's just evil. That's it. Pure fucking evil. And I don't know, I, I was just always found that to be kind of a boring character. That's why I like Izuru, I think it's so much more interesting, because he was a good guy, but now he's bad again, but he's still got that part hidden inside of him. I don't know, I mean, is there something redeeming about her? Is there, like, is that in there somewhere? Other than her just being pure evil and that she's, like, a super genius? Oh my god, you have your name on that fucking building? What a door! Oh yeah, also, um, one thing that you guys sort of pointed out, and I didn't really, I didn't really understand it, when Kigeru was inspecting Izeoi's body, she found some kind of powder on him. I don't know exactly what that would be. It, would it be, like, like, confectioner sugar or something? Like, suggesting that Ruka maybe killed her? Oh yes, and Gekagahara. I didn't realize her her head was actually turned 180 degrees on her dead body. Oh, fuck. All right, down to 10. Still. Ultra Despair Girls. Sci Future Episode 7. Ah, oh, huh. Are we, uh, is this Kana is this gonna be a Kamaru Fukawa focused one or something? Hey, there he is. Nagisa, that was his fucking name. Former super grade school level social studies. Nagisa Shingetsu. He was actually a pretty cool character. I, like, I like characters that, if they're evil, at least have them be sort of redeeming in some way. Make their, like, goal, what they want, just seem like, okay, I could sort of understand that, you know? If it's just pure evil, it's just boring. Oh, oh, look, you can see behind him. It's the beautiful kid, the kid that kept selling himself ugly. <laughs> yeah, there they are. Oh, my God. Yeah, super high school level PE, super level grade school level drama, former super grade level school level art. Are they working with Future Foundation? Is that who he's talking to? Like, to Tagami or something? Ah! That's cool. I'm glad they're working together now. Oh, right in my fucking face! Ah, uh, this brings back memories. <laughs> Just a normal, yeah, a normal high school girl with a fucking gun. Yes, that's back when Kamaru, like, I feel like looked totally different. <laughs> and her boobs were, like, three sizes smaller. Kamikaze! Opa, opa, opa. Oh, here we go. Fukawa, I don't know why you just don't keep staying in that form all the time, all right? Just keep OP powers activated. You're literally invincible. Oh, that's right. I forgot to call her Dekamaru. Because her name's sort of like the, the toilet or something, right? That's what the save point was, was a little toilet. It's all for my boobs. Mmm, puffy face. Wow, really breaking the fourth wall there, aren't we? Holy fuck, there's a lot of me. Ah, I feel like somebody said something horny about me. Damn it, Fukawa. No, don't do it. Uh, Oh, crap. Here we go. Oh, yeah. I am sexy Tagami. I don't need my glasses. Holy mother of God. Look at her. She finally took a bath, guys. Look at the tits on that girl. Wow. And her eyes. They just don't stop sparkling. See, my eyes can also do that. God, I knew this would take a weirder turn. Junior Biakius. Holy crap. And they're all the same age? I don't even know what, what, what you would call that. How big is your vagina, Fukawa? <laughs> wow, her boobs are so not big. Oh my god. 19 children. Fucking. What the fuck? <laughs> We're right in front of the children. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. Something horrible has happened. Oh my god! Wow, Nico, you really can see the future, can't you? Yes, I fucking knew it. I mean, I do have ultimate powers. Just keep my legs crossed. Don't let him see your boner. As long as Tagami continues to breathe and not be molested by Fukawa, I will not let us be defeated. For I'm Tagami, hear me roar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, fuck that little bitch. I don't give a shit if she's a kid. She deserves to die by this fucking point. She's talking to herself again. I haven't fought that many Monokuma since our last game. Yeah, and I've been upgrading the fuck out of you since then. If you thought we were OP before, Nico, you wait till you see us now. Infinite ammo. Oh, uh, look, it's this big fucking robot again. Uh, I remember fighting you guys. God, we get any opportunity we can to show us Kamara's panties, don't we? Ugh. Shut up, Monica. Just shut up. I sincerely doubt she's the one behind everything, honestly. She's too immature to do this shit. I, I, I don't know. 
And again, she pulled off the other stuff, but I would be kind of disappointed if that's just it. It's just her. And then the traitor in the or in the group is just her. I, I, but I don't think so. It's just, it'd just be too obvious. <laughs> what do you guys say you thought Monica's hairstyle looked like someone had taped cucumbers to her head? <laughs> and you're right, it totally does. It just looks kind of weird, doesn't it? It doesn't make any sense at all. Oh, yeah, forget about the big robot. Oh, come on. I've already fought these. I... Are you the final boss? I didn't fight you already. What? What? Oh, God, this is it. We're about to die. Oh, where did you give up? Never run. Boo! Oh, that was an easy final boss. <laughs> Thank you for playing Ultra Despair Girls 2. Hope you enjoy the experiments. It's literally one level, and then at, when you reach the final boss, it just kills itself. And missing our clothes never seem to get torn up. Hey guys, it's the Monica the Man! It's Tonka Tough, motherfuckers! Duh. What in the fuck? Wow, her voice sounds considerably deeper than it did before. Before she was trying to sound like a little girl, now it's now the voice actress just sounds like an like her regular voice, I think. Uh, oh. What? Try to play a trick with ketchup just like the old days. What? You're telling me you're the one who stuck that fake knife between my boobies? And you wasted all that delicious ketchup on me? How dare you? <laughs> uh, oh, no, no. I, I I killed that bitch. Oh, well. Then you still fucking deserve to die for that. Well, that was... Let me say that again. How did she... Picks it up in their mouth and throws it in the air and eats it. <laughs> Worthless human being. <laughs> look, Nico. Look. I am being helpful. <laughs> I looked at it for about two seconds and decided, fuck that, I don't want any of that insanity. Oh, come on, it's not so bad being me. Look, you get a cool little metal leash, get people to step on you, tell you worthless you are, and then, at the end of the day, you get a whole box full of bagels. And then you get to use those bagels to have sex with an 80-year-old man. Yeah, what's not to love about that? I'm, I'm here, too. I'm, I'm the judge. I'm, I'm from Phoenix Riot Games. <laughs> oh, my God, really? I was waiting for her to be like, nah, just kidding. I'm fucking with you. Is she actually serious? Wow, puberty hit you like a fucking ton of bricks. <laughs> it's like, I think it's like what happened. Also, she's like, oh, you know what? Never mind. I passed that. Oh, look, she's also playing her game girl. <laughs> Google it, fool. Oh, Monica, that's the funniest fucking thing you've ever actually said. Congratulations. That puts you up a notch in my book. That puts you at notch one. <laughs> Google it tell me that yes it will it's are you kidding me they've been keeping track of every episode of this she actually fart ew she did ew <laughs> ew fuck it kill you now oh no guys dick around too much oh i'm coming in for a bear hug are you fucking shitting me oh god there's fire shooting out my butthole oh! now to spare this is so fucking random like what the fuck what the oh, god, what are you doing I I know you're invincible, but for fuck's sake. Okay, I'm pretty sure by this point you can't go down anyway, so might as well go all the way, right? I don't know why I couldn't have just topped in there, grabbed her, and jumped back out again. Or I don't know, maybe not spent so much time talking to her, gone in there, grabbed her, out of there? Holy fucking shit. That's a really random way to end Monica's arc. <laughs> not with a bang, but with a sigh. Catch me, catch me, catch me! Oh, I don't know if your boobs will fit on this thing, Kamaru! Oh, they love each other. She really going to space? Yeah, I guess so. Wow, that was uh, kind of a uh, weird way to end that story. I know, right? That's what I'm thinking too. Really? This is what Ultra Despair Girls is building up to? I say that's the end of Monica? She, that was her contribution to Dog and Opa 3? No, fuck you! You know, I've just realized something. Nico has never used this voice for any other character except me. Maybe just because you're so original. No, it's, I think it's because he fucking hates this voice and it sounds like ass. You're right, Fukawa. That's exactly fucking right. Oh, I fucking knew it! Why are you saying that with a smile on your face, Kamara? Once she's done staying in rooms all day, she'll come back and kill us all. So what are we, uh, what have we been doing the whole time? Oh, we were making out, remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, am I in little mini donuts? Mmm. And go straight to my boobs. <laughs> what the hell? You tell me you were laying that girl over there. Why did you tell me? Oh, my God. She did do me a favor. Shut up. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I thought that was Monica. Okay. Wait, how did... So they had... She left her thing down there to communicate with him? Uh-oh. That's got to be Kigiri, right? Because because we're both here, right? So... Or Tagami? What about me, dudes? I'm also a part of the story. No, you're not. Nobody cares about you, Hakuri. Oh, no. Oh, oh, Mudokata's coming for you, Kigiri. And that's the end of that one. Huh. That was, uh... That was kind of a weird one, wasn't it? I was happy that they, uh... Kind of brought back Kamaru and Fukawa for, like, you know... 
for the show, and I mean, it was cool they got their own episode, and seeing as, you know, they were the ones who knew Monica, and I guess it sort of seemed right that they'd be the ones to take care of her, but the ending for that was kind of weak, wasn't it? I mean, I guess the point was sort of like to go against people's expectations, you know, expect a big final battle, nope, just gonna, just gonna blast off, but it didn't really make it satisfying in any way. Oh, and also just the fact that they just let Monica get away so easily, and they're like, no, so many times they could have just like grabbed her or something before that, Nope, they just sat there talking to her, talking to her, talking to her, didn't restrain her, just gonna keep talking to her, talking to her. That was kind of, I think, one of, one of the weaker episodes, in my opinion. It just wasn't, uh, wasn't terribly satisfying, really. Also, I don't know, especially, it makes you feel like, like, the whole point of Ultra Spirit Girls, Monica and everything, you know, like, the whole point of her surviving at the end was that I thought, you know, she showed up here, and, like, oh, good, we're gonna, so she's probably gonna get this really, uh, important role in the story. No, not really, turns out she really had nothing to do with it, the only... The only reason she was there was, again, to go against our expectations, right? Because we're like, well, you know, Monica's there, so she obviously must be the killer or something. And then, I guess. But but even that, I mean, they revealed it so early. I mean, I think no one would really think that that was just it. You know, I was just saying how earlier, I, it didn't seem very likely that it would be. But you figured that she at least served some ulterior motive or an, ad, ad, an additional thing to maybe whatever the mastermind is behind all this. No, just, she was the one that did the, the Sheena thing, so we got that, and she killed Gekigahara, and, uh, that's it, that's, that's, that's it, that's, it. that's her contribution to it. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed by that, I, I don't know, I, I don't know if I'm alone on this, but I, it's definitely the, one of the weaker ones to me, which sucks, uh, like I said, I like Kamaru and Fukawa, I, I like Fukawa now after her, you know, how she transformed from the first game to, to Ultra Spare Girls, yeah. And it was, I mean, it was cool seeing them. It's cool seeing them do the action. I felt like I was, I was getting a lot of nostalgia over watching uh, them blast all the Monokumas and stuff. Yeah, I kind of wish there had been more to it than that. I, I don't know. I almost, I almost feel like that's going to be the end of the uh, Kamaru's and Fukawa's contribution to the story too. So, Munakata, sure taking a sweet fucking time, isn't it? Good God, he's, what do he do? Stop by the coffee shop, grab himself espresso and like a crumpet. It's in there, what? Reading the newspaper, eating. He's like, oh, let's see. Should I go do? Should I go kill him? Not? Wait, I, I gotta finish this crossword puzzle first. <sighs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite, and subscribe if you're not already. Become a picky penguin. For this LP, where the days are always sunny. And the vids are always funny. I'm almost caught up. I'm just about there. So there's there's episode seven of the spare arc that I gotta I gotta do, and then there's episode eight for both of them. Although by the time I actually watch that, probably nine will be out. But I'm like I'm almost there. I'll probably get it right when it's like about the end of the series anyway. But yeah. Anyway, as always, guys. Till next time. Stay classy.